Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. And I'm going to give you some information in this live video that is going to blow your mind, that's going to freak you out. And it's also going to free you from your fear of saturated fat. Now, I know for the last 50 or 60 or 70 years, we've been told that saturated fat is bad for us. First of all, we were told you shouldn't eat any saturated fat. Any saturated fat's bad for you, right? And then we were told, well, you know, you just need to limit saturated fat because it, too much of it is bad for you. And then uh, the American College of Cardiology stopped recommending a minimum intake of cholesterol because they well knew that eating cholesterol does not raise your cholesterol. And now they have a, an article that has been accepted by the Journal of the American College of Cardiology that's in the pre-proof stage. It just has to be gone over again for typos. And it will be published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. And it is a state-of-the-art review about saturated fat intake and the dangers or the lack of danger in eating any amount of saturated fat. And that's what this live video is about. Now, I want you to, if you have questions about this, ask me your questions in the comments. I'm going to be watching the comments, but they go by very quickly. So if I haven't answered your question in a minute or two, type your question in again. So first, I want to tell you about the politics behind this. I want to tell you about the article and the journal that's going to be published in. And then I'll tell you about some other studies that have been around for decades that were basically ignored that showed that replacing animal fats with plant vegetable oil fats is bad for you and causes more heart attacks and more cancer and earlier death that they ignored for what's um, what's 120 minus 65. That, that, that's how many years they've been ignoring this research. But uh, this group of authors did this state-of-the-art review, and they have this is going to be published in the ACC Journal coming up, and this is a huge breakthrough for anyone who is either eating a low-carb diet, a keto diet, or a carnivore diet, or is contemplating eating low-carb, keto, or carnivore, and you were worried that it might increase your risk of heart attack or stroke, or that it might raise your cholesterol or make you have a higher risk of having heart disease. If that's the reason that you weren't doing keto, then you need to listen to this live. This is gonna, uh, this is gonna break the chains of cholesterol, of saturated fat, of the fear that if you eat what I call the proper human diet, you might be healthier and look healthier, but you're gonna have a heart attack. How many times have you heard that on social media or from your mama? Now. If you are uh, watching this right now, please help me spread this good news by sharing this video, okay? Uh, you can, if you're on Facebook, you can start a watch party. You can type people's names in and tag them. You can inv invite friends to watch with you on YouTube. You can share this video to any other social media and share this while this is live. This will be available on Facebook and, in and YouTube in perpetuity. And I've got links to all the research on my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching from Instagram, I couldn't post the links for you guys, uh, but they are on my Facebook page and they are on my YouTube channel. So if you're not if you're not subscribed or or following all three of those, you never know where I'm going to go live. So you, you ought to follow me on all three so that if when I have a bright idea or when I come up with breaking research like this you'll be one of the very first people to know. So first of all, <clears throat> the American College of Cardiology is good buddies with the American Heart Association. They're actually kind of uh, the two sides of the same coin. And the American College of Cardiology and their journals is more for uh, medical practitioners and the American Heart Association is supposed to translate their message to the general public and to raise money. That's the AHA's main uh, reason for existence. 
but they're also supposed to help the general public understand what a heart healthy diet is. And for the last 50 or 60 years, they've been doing a terrible job at that. But I think that enough people who are eating keto and low carb and carnivore have shared their health transformation story with their doctor and their healthcare provider and their cardiologist and their endocrinologist. I think enough of you guys have done that, that it has trickled up to the top. And the powers that be at the, at the ACC realize that the advice that they've been giving is stupid. And not only stupid, but it's harmful. They've been harming people. And so the, the AHA and the ACC are very much a plant-based organization. I want you to understand that. They believe in their heart of hearts, in, in their, their, their religious, fervent, honest heart that a plant-based diet is the healthiest diet. That's what they believe but that don't make it true, right? So there's all this research that's been out there that's either been just not published or has been actively suppressed for decades, showing that when you replace the saturated fat from animal fats with the polyunsaturated fats from vegetable oils, people uniformly do worse. They have more heart attacks, they have more cancer, they get sicker quicker and they die quicker. Yeah, there's actual, and now let me, I'm going to tell you about those studies in a minute. You're going to be blown away because you've heard so many people say, well, there's just no research to back up keto or, or, or carnivore or low carb that it's safe. If you, I mean, yeah, you might lose weight and reverse your diabetes and reverse your fatty liver, but you're going to die of a heart attack. So that's bogus. That's not true. The fact that this plant-based organization, the ACC, whose first cousin, kissing first cousins with the AHA, the fact that they allowed this to be published means that they know. They know with, beyond a shadow of a doubt or they would have never allowed this to be published. So that's number one. They know that keto is right. They know that low carb is right. They know that animal fats do not increase your risk of heart attack, stroke, or cancer, or any other dumb crap that we're told that it increases your risk of. Otherwise, they would have never allowed this to be published. You have to understand that, number one. Number two, this is a huge backtrack for them. If they'd been right for all these decades, they would have laughed at somebody who presented this paper unless they knew they were wrong. So this is not a formal apology from the ACC or the AHA, but it is one step in that direction. And I think you'll quickly see by, by hanging out with me on this live that this is the first domino, first major domino to fall, in which is going to lead to all the other dominoes falling from uh, saying that animal meat is bad for you, animal fats are bad for you, that, that high cholesterol is bad for you, that, you that, that even high LDL is bad for you, that you should take a statin or other cholesterol-lowering drug. All of those dominoes are about to fall. And I can predict that because the ACC allowed this paper to be published in their, their prestigious heart journal. Think about the politics of that. Uh, 10 years ago, if these same authors had brought the same information to the ACC, they would have laughed them out of the room. Like you're an idiot if you think the ACC is going to publish this. I don't care what the research says. We'll never publish that. The fact that they're going to publish this in their journal is a huge win for the low-carb keto carnivore community. It's also a huge blow for the vegan community and for the plant-based based uh, eat Lancet for all those guys who want you to eat a plant-based diet. This is a huge blow to their argument because basically the ACC is admitting there's no minimum or maximum amount of saturated fat that we can recommend that's either healthy or not healthy. So this is a huge deal. Now you guys watching, tell me, tell me where you're watching from. I want to see how, how big the reach is. What city are you in? What state, what country? Tell me in the comments and let me see where you're at so I can know how to tailor this to you. So uh, unexpected hilarity said, what about avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oil? Great question. So those are, first of all, not vegetable seed oils. Those are fruit seed oils. All three of those are a fruit. And so I don't have any problem with the fruit seed oils. I think that uh, avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oil are fine. I think you can eat probably as much of those as you want and you don't have to worry about anything. They're definitely not going to increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. And, and indeed, 
Uh, you remember the AHA came out with a position paper about a year, year and a half ago saying that coconut oil was the devil because it was full of saturated fat. And now their kissing cousin, the ACC, has come out and, and allowed this paper to be published. It says, yeah, no, there's no minimum, um, there's no minimum like cutoff level. Oh, if you eat more saturated fat than this, it's dangerous. There is no level that they can talk about because there is no science that proves that position. So, and, and uh, good question. Sharon says, do you think cardiologists will give credit to this research? This, this, the ACC journal is the preeminent cardiology heart journal in the world. So if they don't listen to this, then they're living in fairy tale land. They, they are basically admitting to themselves and indirectly to their patients, I believe what I believe and I, could, I don't give a damn what the research says, I believe what I believe and you're gonna do what I say. At that point, how good of a doctor are you really? Think about that. Any healthcare providers watching, you need to get a copy of this article. So the article is behind a paywall and it's because only members of the ACC have access to the full text. I paid 35 bucks and got this uh, thanks to my Facebook supporters and patrons on patreon.com. This is the kind of stuff that I use that money for. I got the full paper, so I was able to read it all, look at the citations. So yeah, if a, if a, and so every healthcare provider listening, you owe it to your patients. If you're not a member of the ACC, you owe it to your patients to pay 35 bucks and get the PDF of this article, read this article, and realize that if the ACC allowed this to be published in their journal, tides are turning. The paradigm is shifting. They, they are admitting that a high fat diet is not dangerous. They are admitting that there is no maximum level of safe intake for saturated fats. That's a huge deal. And you need to understand that. Now, let me go through the other research that, that really matters. And so if any of you guys follow me much, you know that <clears throat> the strongest research of all is a randomized control trial in human beings that goes on for some period of time, right? You don't want a, a study that has four people in it. You want a study with a lot of people. You don't want a study that, go, that, that only lasts for seven or 10 days. You want a study that lasts for months, if not years. Let me tell you about three studies that were done that were either not published at all or that were uh, published in some obscure journal in Norway that nobody read. And, and therefore, they could claim, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm being ethical here. I published my results. But these studies should have been published by the American College of Cardiology, but were not. So the first study was done in 1965. And some of you may be thinking, well, oh, that's, a, that's antique. That probably was not even done right. No, 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 no. That's back when, when scientists and researchers actually did research properly. That's, that's when that was. So back in 1965, there was a study called the corn oil in treatment of ischemic heart disease. It was a two-year-long study, so it was very long. It was done on thousands of people, and it was a randomized control trial. I, wait, I thought people said you can never do a randomized control trial about diet. That's what Walter Willett says at the Harvard School of Public Health. Well, back in 1965, they did it, and they did a great job, and I've got a link to that article on my Facebook page and YouTube channel. And they found that when you re replace the animal saturated fat that you find in egg yolks, butter, fatty meat, and full fat dairy, when you replace that with margarine and corn oil, people have more heart attacks and they have a higher rate of cancer and they die sooner. This was a two year long randomized control trial in human beings. And it showed without a doubt that corn oil is much more dangerous than the saturated fatty acids in animal fats. That's number one. Then along comes the Sydney Diet Heart Study, done in Sydney, Australia. It was done in 1967, two years later, back when scientists did science properly. This is also a randomized control trial. This was also done in humans. It lasted for eight years. So yes, there is an eight year long randomized control trial study in human beings, not in rats or rabbits or spider monkeys, in humans. 
that shows that when you replace the saturated fat found in animal fat products like butter, egg yolks, ghee, uh, fatty meat, with a vegetable oil rich in linoleic acid, you actually increase the risk of heart attack. You actually increase the placking in their heart arteries. You know, the plaque buildup, that actually is worse with vegetable oil. They have an increased risk of cancer and uh, they die sooner. Eight year long study, but it was never talked about. It was never published in any reputable journal back then because back then was when they were really in love with the lipid heart hypothesis that saturated fat caused high cholesterol and that caused heart attacks. And that was the end of the story. That's what everybody believed. Okay. So that's what you got to understand is that these studies have been done. Just nobody knows about them because they hid them. One, one of these studies was found in a retired professor's basement on the magnetic film from the old big room size computers and he just put it in his basement and forgot about it because it did not support Ansel Key's hypothesis. It did not support the lipid heart hypothesis of heart disease. So he knew that if he published it, he would be ruined as a scientist. He wouldn't get any more research money. He definitely wouldn't get any grant money from big food or big pharma because they want to sell pills and junk food. They don't want people to know the truth about science. Then the third study was done in 1969 the Minnesota coronary experiment. This was also a randomized control trial in human beings. It was not done in fruit flies or pangolins. It was actually done in humans and it was randomized and controlled. And it was a five year long study that had hundreds and hundreds of participants. And they found that when you replace the saturated fats found in animal fats like butter, eggs, bacon, ghee, and things like that, with vegetable oil, guess what they found? You want to guess? People have more heart attacks. They had more heart placking. They died sooner and they had a higher rate of cancer. So I, that, I've got links to all three of these studies that were randomized controlled trials in human beings that had a huge participant number and lasted for the minute. The, the, the shortest one was two years long. I've got links on my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. So don't ever again let anybody tell you that there's no proof that keto won't kill you. Yeah, we got the proof. We've had the proof since 1965. Animal fats are good for human beings. Vegetable oils are bad for human beings. Or you could say they're less good than animal fats. These studies pretty much wrap that O up and put a bow on it and send it to you for your birthday, okay? And now this study in the ACC journal that has about 10 authors, some of the names you would know, like Jeff Volick, saturated fats and health, a reassessment and proposal for food-based recommendations. So instead of just picking out one little micro or macronutrient like saturated fat and vilifying it, let's look at the entire food. So let's not talk about saturated fat, Let's talk about butter and, and its health benefits because most of the foods that your doctor or your dietitian or your other health care provider say, well, that's a fat, that's bad for you. Uh, that's, that's a very childish thing to, to say. That's very sophomoric. Let's take butter, for example. So yeah, butter has saturated fat in it. I'm glad it does. But butter also is a multivitamin and a multimineral. If it's a pastured cow that gave you the milk that produced that, that milk fat, that butter, that is like taking a multivitamin when you eat that. It has a plethora of healthy fatty acids in it. It has lots of minerals. It has lots of vitamins. Hugely, hugely healthy food. Same goes for, for fatty ground beef. Oh, well, that's just a protein, some people would say, because it's meat. Other people would say, oh, it's a fat because it's, it's the fatty. You got 70-30. That's fat. That's bad for you. No, that is a literal superfood full of every amino acid you need for optimal health, full of every fatty acid you need for optimal health, and full of vitamins and minerals that you cannot get from any plant on the planet. That's what ground beef, 70-30 ground beef is. So, whoa, bacon. Bacon is the devil 
any, ask anybody, they'll tell you, right? Bacon is the devil. So what is bacon? Bacon is fat and protein. It, it's fatty meat and, and lean meat in strips. And if this is a pastured pig, that is going to have every essential amino acid you need for optimal health. It's going to have every fatty acid you need for optimal health. And it's going to have a multivitamins worth of vitamins and minerals if it's a pastured pig. So where where's the danger? Why am I going to die of a heart attack if I eat keto? Tell me again, because I missed your point. So the entire reason that your doctor or your dietitian or your mama tells you, oh, I heard bad things about keto. You better not eat keto. You'll have a heart attack. Well, there's only one peg they were hanging their coat on. It was, it was full of saturated fat. And this review, and this is not new research. This is basically just an honest review of existing research is what this is. These guys didn't do any research. So if every single one of these guys is funded by big meat, that's irrelevant because they didn't do new research. They talked about old research that had been ignored up until the present, kind of like these three randomized control trials. And one of these trials was double-blinded, the ultimate, ultimate scientific study, a randomized control double-blind study. Okay, so even if the researchers of the Minnesota Coronary Institute, they all had preconceived biases. They thought plant-based was better. They thought saturated fat from animals was bad. That's what they thought that you can go back and read their bio and it, they admit that. But when, but the, the randomized control part of this study protected the results from their bias and from their paradigm. That's why when they crunched the data, they had two choices, either lie and change the data, which they were honorable enough not to do. Unlike some of the researchers at the Harvard school of public health in recent years, that was option number one, either just tell a big fat lie to support their, their bias or just don't publish it. And so they, all three of these guys chose to either not publish their, their results or to publish it in some tiny journal in Scandinavia in a foreign language so that nobody would ever read it except for the 10 people who subscribed to that journal. And that wouldn't matter because back then you didn't have the internet. You didn't have social media. You could publish something in some, in some obscure journal like that. It would stay hidden forever, but you would still publish your results. And so that was considered ethical. You did not hide your results, you published them. In the, in the Scandinavian Journal of, of Frog Pathology, that is in Swedish, so nobody can read it except the 10 people who subscribe. You see that? See that trick? It's still technically ethical because you publish your results. But then one of the studies didn't even get published for years. Somebody had to discover it in a retired professor's basement. I think actually his son discovered it. The professor had passed away. If you're finding this unbelievable, I don't believe. I don't blame you. I wouldn't have believed this either ten years ago. I didn't know back then what I know now. So now you know. The next time, and I want everybody watching this. I want you to print out the abstract of the ACC article, and then the links that I've got on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Those links are to the full text of the articles from the, on the research done in 65, 67, and 69. I want you to print all three of those out, and I want you to just keep them in your purse, keep them in your briefcase, keep them in your glove box. And when somebody says keto will kill you, I want you to just take them out and just hand them to them politely and say, I eat keto based on this randomized control research. Well, what are you talking about? Because the problem with nutrition science over the last 20 or 30 years is that everything has been based on observational research. And a fellow by the name of Dr. Walter Willett, who is or was the chairman of, the, of nutrition at the Harvard School of Public Health, he basically perfected the food frequency questionnaire and he made observational epidemiological research settle science. He said, no, this is the state of the art in nutrition. You could never do a randomized controlled trial in a, in a, on a nutritional issue. So we have to do epidemiology and we have to use food frequency questionnaires. Evidently, Dr. Willett never read the three studies that I've got links to down below. I don't know, maybe, or maybe he did, but that he just didn't like their findings. And so he elected not to consider them consciously. 
So let's see. Let that that that's a good intro. Let me take some questions here. If you guys have a question, ask them again in the in the comments. I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm gonna try to answer as many as I can. Jenny says, I think you and Nina Taicho should write alternate dietary guidelines rather than wait for the USDA to do the right thing. I, that's a great point, Jenny. I think the USDA is probably going to drag their feet because, you know, the USDA, when they come up with guidelines like the food pyramid, before they actually publish them, they turn them over to uh, the big food manufacturers and the big farming, and they let them make corrections before they publish them. Did you know they did that? Yeah. Nina talks about it in her book, The Big Fat Surprise. I talk about it in my book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, on the in the chapter about the food pyramid. They actually turned it over to the big food and big pharma farming and said, hey, you guys look over this and make any changes you think we need to make. And they did. And they did it based on their profit motive. And then they gave it back to the USDA. And the USDA had published it as official United States government policy. And I know the adults out there saying, well, I don't follow the food pyramid or, or my plate. I don't have to. I'm, I'm grown. I can do what I want. And that's true. But what happens to your child who's in preschool or kindergarten or, or school? What happens if you have a relative who's in the correctional institutes? What happens if you have a relative who's in assisted living or a nursing home? Those institutions are forced by law to feed every single person in under their control by the MyPlate guidelines. If they don't do that, they will lose their federal funding. So yeah, maybe you don't eat the, the MyPlate or the food pyramid, but I guarantee you, you've got a relative who has to. What about people in the hospital? What about people in uh, short-term care facilities? If those facilities get one penny of money from the federal government, then they are mandated by law to follow the MyPlate guidelines. So these people are not getting the butter that would feed them and help their wounds to heal and help their brain to heal. They're not getting the fatty meat that every human being on the planet needs. And there's so, yeah, maybe you're not eating it, but somebody is that you care about and they have no choice. It's being forced on them by the federal government. So I think Jenny makes an excellent point. How long is it going to take before the USDA recognizes that they made a huge mistake and correct that mistake. I don't know. It probably depends on how vocal we are on social media, on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, how many times a day we tweet the USDA or we tag them in a Facebook post so that they know that we know. Because when they realize that enough of us know that they look like buffoons, much like the ACC, they'll come around. There's nothing like pointing out the ignorance of an intelligent man to make him change his tune. Don't forget that. So before you think I'm just one person, I don't have any power. Uh, if you started tweeting the USDA, a link to this article and these three articles every single day, if thousands of people started doing that every single day, they can't block all of us, right? How long do you think how, do you think that would speed up the process? Because I bet it would, because you would make them look like either evil or buffoons. That's what you would make them look like when you retweeted enough thousand times and tens of thousands of people are tweeting them and retweeting. They're going to look like dummies and they don't like that. They like to look like they're smart and in charge. And I think that's why the ACC decided to let this be published is because they know they've been wrong. This is a this is a nice little Mayor Cooper saying, well, maybe we were wrong about that, but I still wouldn't hold my breath for the press conference where they admit on CNN and Fox News and MSNBC that they were wrong and that they harmed people for 50 years, recommending Crisco made of cottonseed oil. That was their first idiotic recommendation because they got a big fat check. Then they recommend all the vegetable oils, canola oil, don't eat coconut, that'll cause a heart attack, it's got saturated fat. That was what they did for how many decades? I mean, when are they going to apologize for that? Because we've got three randomized controlled trials in humans here, big studies that went on for years, showing beyond a shadow of any doubt 
that if you replace the, the healthy animal fats in a human being's diet with vegetable seed oils, rich in linoleic acid, you are doing harm to that human being. These are three randomized controlled trials. This is how you establish causation. With an epidemiological study, all you can show is a possible association. These studies show causation. They show that removing animal saturated fat and replacing it with vegetable seed oil fat does harm. Think about that. These are the studies that we can prove causation from. So is the current AHA recommendation, the American Heart Association, is there a recommendation to, to limit saturated fat in the diet? Is that endangering people's lives? Because these three randomized controlled trials in humans that went on for years, they say that the American Heart Association is causing harm, is endangering lives. That's what these three studies say, and that's what this state-of-the-art review seems to suggest, is that if you don't eat your, your saturated fat, you're harming yourself. And if you recommend someone else not eat saturated fat, you're causing them harm. You're endangering their life because human beings have to have saturated fat. That's a fact. We've been eating as much fatty meat as we could get our hands on for 200,000 years as Homo sapiens sapien, which is what you are if you're watching this video, unless you're a dog watching it with your master or with your pet, however you want to look at that. Human beings need saturated fat. We need the essential fatty acids found in the saturated fat from animal foods. We need that. So, I mean, some people have even said there might be a class action lawsuit against the American Heart Association for the harm that they've caused in the lives they've endangered, recommending a low fat diet and recommending people avoid the nutrition found in fatty animal foods. I don't know. I, I'm not a I'm not an attorney or a politician. I just tell you what I see. Let's see. Wait a minute. There was a good question here. <laughs> Chevrolet says a dog forces him to watch. I figured somebody out there was like that. La -da -da -da. Where was that question? Man, they're going so fast. Hang on. You guys are welcome to share this video. If your mama still thinks saturated fat is bad for you, please share this video with your mama. And I've never seen them go this fast. I mean, this is big news, I know. I can't even get them. Yeah, okay, good. Now, Lynn says, well, there it went again. What the heck? Okay. Lynn Penny says, what about cholesterol numbers? Now, that's an excellent question, Lynn. And here's why. We were, remember we were told years back, don't eat any extra cholesterol because that will make your cholesterol go up, right? Then we were told, well, and so the, the American Heart Association stopped recommending a maximum intake of cholesterol because they realized that was idiotic. You can't make your cholesterol go up by eating cholesterol. It doesn't work that way. So then they just, they, they hung their hat on the peg of Oh, it's saturated fat. That's that's what's bad for you, saturated fatty acids. And so they said, you've got to limit saturated fat, which means maybe two egg yolks a week, maybe one piece of bacon a week. Don't eat fatty cuts of meat. Eat the lean cuts. If you're eating chicken, take the skin off. All that advice was not based on any meaningful research. In fact, we got three randomized controlled trials right here that I've got links to on my Facebook and my YouTube channel that you can print out yourself and show to your mama or your doctor or your next door neighbor and tell them to shut up about the saturated fat. Animal fats are good for human beings. So now, Lynn, this, this uh, state-of-the-art review article right here, this is the first domino to fall. And so if eating cholesterol is not bad for us, which they've already admitted, now if eating saturated fat is not bad for us and evidently any amount they said there's no maximum level that would be considered dangerous well then is cholesterol having high cholesterol is that really bad for us if you have that question 
I would refer you to my good friend, David Fellman, Dave Fellman. He has a website called cholesterolcode.com in which on that website, he goes into great detail about cholesterol. And he actually got the data from the NHANES study and he's crunching that data. And what he's finding is that the higher someone's total cholesterol is, looks like they live longer. It looks like they have less cancer and it looks like they have less all-cause mortality, which means they just don't die as often or soon as someone with a lower cholesterol. So when you start looking at that, then Lynn, we're like, okay, well, maybe having high cholesterol is not really bad for us. That's the next domino that's going to fall. And before long, there will be a paper saying, yeah, your high, high total cholesterol really doesn't mean anything. And actually, they've been moving to that for a few years. Now they're trying to hang their hat on LDL cholesterol. They call that the bad cholesterol. And that's what you really got to watch out for, right? Problem is... My good friend, Dr. David Diamond, a PhD researcher in Florida, he's been working on this for years and he's got great videos on YouTube and he's got great blog posts he's written and he's given great speeches about the fact that taking a statin or a, a lipid lowering drug to lower your LDL is ridiculous. It does not make any difference for the average person if they take their Zocor, Lipitor, Crestor every day for 45 years it might help them live three days longer. But I would opine that eating lots of fatty meat, lots of animal saturated fat will help you live way longer than just two or three days. So uh, it's an excellent question, Lynn. I, I think that we're going to find out here in the near future that lowering your total cholesterol definitely does not have a health benefit whatsoever. And then lastly, we'll find out that lowering your LDL cholesterol, which they call the bad cholesterol. I call it the other good cholesterol. I don't think there's any such thing as bad cholesterol. We'll find that that really doesn't have a health benefit either. And then all the big pharma companies that make billions of dollars selling you Zocor, Lipitor, Crestor, they'll just find something else to make billions on and they'll stop selling you that crap. That's what I predict. Yeah. Keto Cricket says, what about the impact of low fat on libido? It's absolutely, we've had thousands of people reach out to us on social media and say, when I started eating saturated animal fat again, it's like a light switch got turned on. Um, I, I did everything better in the bedroom from sleeping to other things. Everything got better when I started eating a meat heavy keto diet or a carnivore diet, everything got better. So yeah, Keto Cricket, I think that's a big deal. Guys, thank you for the stars on Facebook and thank you for the super chats on um, on YouTube. It means so much when you guys help us out. Let's see. Let me find a Hey, Nisha loves it's watching. You guys follow my wife, Nisha. Nisha loves it. You can find her on all social media. Go follow her. Let's see. Yeah, there's lots of people here, Sonda. Sandra, sorry. Uh, look at this. Less than a year on keto and I've lost 45 pounds. Please eat fat. I don't eat sugar and I don't eat breads. That's it. That's step one and step two of keto. Why did triglycerides go up 42% in three months been on keto? Me, the reason your triglycerides are elevated is because you are still eating too many total carbohydrates for your personal biochemistry. OK, and this this confuses a lot of people. So this is a good thing to talk about. So there are some people out there. They can eat 100 total grams of carbs a day and have beautiful lab numbers. They're usually younger and thinner and they're, and they're healthier and they're more active. But they can they can eat up to 100 total grams a day and still have normal triglycerides. Other people, me being included, if I eat more than 10 grams of total grams of car carbohydrate a day, my triglycerides will start to creep up above normal. Now, is that fair? No. Is life fair? No. So we got to live with that, okay? And so whatever I want you to, me, I want you to download a tracker like chronometer. And for the next two weeks, I want you to document everything you eat so that you can, first of all, figure out the true number of total carbohydrates you're eating. And I predict it's going to be somewhere between 30 and 60 grams a day of total carbohydrates. And then you're going to cut that in half. And then do that for three months and then go get your triglycerides checked again. And I guarantee you they'll be normal. Good question. Thanks for that 
Thanks for the super chat. Let's see. Yeah, who said that? Man, they're going so fast. This is crazy. Oh, thank you, Annabella. That's sweet. Yeah, Dana, do not worry about eating cholesterol. There is no level that eating cholesterol becomes dangerous. Thanks to these three randomized controlled trials and this state-of-the-art review, there is no amount of saturated fat that is considered dangerous. You can eat as many pieces of bacon as you want every day. ACC Journal, state-of-the-art review. You can eat as much butter every day as you want. ACC, state-of-the-art review. You can eat as much fatty beef as you want. ACC, state-of-the-art review. There is no limit. So if you've been limiting yourself to two eggs and two pieces of bacon, why? Why are you doing that? Now, if two pieces of, of bacon and two eggs, if that satiates you and makes you comfortably full, keep doing that. But if you've been limiting your bacon and eggs and butter and, and full fat cheese because you were worried about your cholesterol, you no longer have to do that. You have, we have broken the chains of the cholesterol and saturated fat monster. We have escaped from the prison of the low fat diet culture. Those days are over. This is a new day. That's what this means. The American College of Cardiology has backed away from saying that eating cholesterol is bad, and now from saying that eating saturated fat is bad. I'm, I'm anxious to see how quickly the American Heart Association, who is kissing cousins with the ACC, I'm excited to see how long it takes them to remove all of their idiotic advice from their website. And I think all of us should, should tweet them and retweet them every day and say, hey, the ACC knows better than, than to scare people about saturated fat. When are you going to admit it? And when enough thousands of us tag them and tweet them, they'll shut up with their idiotic advice. That's the power of numbers. That's the power of a grassroots movement like keto, carnivore, low carb. That's our power. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can find the questions. Oh, Misery is Rosie Ortega on Instagram says, what clogs arteries? That's a good question. It's not cholesterol. It's not saturated fat. If it were, then these three randomized controlled trials would show that when people were eating a saturated fat heavy diet, they had more plaques and they had more heart attacks. That makes sense. But it was the opposite. The people who ate the vegetable oil, they're the ones who had more plaquing and more heart attacks. So it's not saturated fat clogging your arteries. It's not cholesterol clogging your arteries. It is two things. It's, it's three things. It's the chronically high blood sugar levels from eating too many carbohydrates. It's the chronically high insulin level that comes from the chronically high carbohydrate intake causing inflammation, and it's the chronic inappropriate inflammation that comes from a diet full of grains and full of fructose and full of, full of sucrose. That's what causes inflammation inside the arteries, which causes damage. Then your body tries to fix that damage, and it uses cholesterol as spackle. It's using the cholesterol to actually fix the artery. But then when we do an autopsy, we see the cholesterol in the artery, and we go, oh, Cholesterol clogged this artery. Cholesterol is bad for you. That's literally the scientific, the depth, the depth and the breadth of the scientific thought that went into this heart hypothesis, this, this lipid heart hypothesis. That's how deep the thinking is. It's sophomoric. It's juvenile. It's stupid. Okay. Your body was trying to use cholesterol just like it uses calcium in art. When there's damage in the arterial wall, it tries to put calcium there to stabilize the artery. The calcium is not the enemy. The cholesterol is not the enemy. The enemy is what caused the inflammation inside the artery. The enemy is what caused the damage inside the artery. That's the enemy that you got to figure out. And it's sugars, it's grains, it's industrial seed oils, and it's the highly processed pseudo crap Franken food diet that Kellogg's and Kraft and Nestle sell us 
They call them nutritious foods. I call them crap. That's the stuff that clogs your artery. Okay, Miss Ortega, great question. Thank you for that. Oh, thanks, Dennis, for the super chat. Uh, don't worry, I won't ever shut up. No matter what burns down, I'm going to be here with you guys. Uh, da, 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 da. Dennis says, how do we clear the blockage? So if you've already got blockages built up in your heart arteries, your kidney arteries, your arteries in your brain, because you can have blockages anywhere. You can have blockages in your legs, in your toes, your feet, in your eyes. How do you clear up those blockages? Well, it's a very slow process. It takes a long time to clear the blockages. Both I and Dr. Robert Sivis and other of my, my friends who are medical doctors have seen regression of coronary artery calcium scores when eating fatty meat, heavy keto, or carnivore. We've seen that hundreds of times. Okay, Ivor Cummings talks about this in the excellent movie he was a part of. He, they actually follow a guy who knocks hundreds of points off his CAC score by eating the proper human diet. And I think that's why low-carb keto carnivore is so healthy and does so many things. Some of the things that keto does for people seems magical, doesn't it? Carnivore is the same way. It's like chronic diseases that are supposed to be permanent. All of a sudden, they're either in remission or they're gone. Where'd they go? How, how, what? So you're telling me just eating this diet made this chronic medical condition go into remission or disappear. It's almost as if low-carb keto carnivore is a spectrum of the proper human diet. And when you feed human beings a spe species appropriate diet, it's like they get healthier. It's like all the chronic inflammation goes away. It's like chronic diseases reverse or go into remission or are cured, however you want to phrase it. I'm not offended by any of them. I'm just happy that you don't any longer suffer from the symptoms of that chronic disease. Does that make sense? Let's see what we got. Yeah, Dana says, uh, eyes, that's my problem. Hoping I can see a difference eating keto carnivore. I can tell you we've had so many people reach out to us who had either macular degeneration or who had diabetic retinopathy who said, you know, I can see better after three months, after six months of keto or carnivore. Uh, I went to my ophthalmologist and he he looked at my eyes and he said that my retina looks better now. And he didn't he didn't understand why. And I told him I was eating keto and he said, oh, that, that definitely wouldn't have anything to do with it. But the retina was better. I can see better. I've heard that so many times. So, yeah, I think that eating the proper human diet, if there is any diet that's going to improve your vision, it would be the proper human diet, right? Thanks for the super chat, my friend. Let's see. Nope, wrong one. Here we go. Is the keto helpful with someone who has cancer? So I actually have a video on, on my YouTube channel about cancer and diet. But let's think about this. Cancer loves sugar, and you can't deny that. There are a few cancers that can limp along on fatty acids and ketones. That is true. But there is no cancer that thrives and flourishes and multiplies like cancer unless it has access to sugar. When we're looking for cancer in a patient's body, we use something called a PET scan, right? How does a PET scan work? We actually take the molecule that we're going to be looking for and attach it to a sugar molecule because we know that the cancer will immediately gobble up the sugar. And then we can see the cancer glow on the, cat, on the PET scan. That's how PET scans work. We don't attach the molecule to a fatty acid or to a ketone. That would not work for a PET scan. We don't attach it to an amino acid or a protein. That would not work. Cancer loves sugar. And in order to thrive and multiply, cancer has to have sugar. And so if you're eating a diet that's very low in sugar, and also very low in anything that turns into sugar, 
I don't know. Common sense. Would you think that that would, would slow the cancer down? I'm not saying keto and carnivore are going to cure cancer. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you, if cancer loves sugar, this is a simple common sense country boy way of thinking about it. If cancer loves sugar so much that we use sugar in a PET scan to find cancer, then wouldn't it make sense that withholding sugar from your bloodstream, which is where your, ca your cancer feeds, wouldn't that slow down the cancer? I mean, what do you think? Let me take a couple of more questions here, guys. Uh, uh, 100%, I need you to share this video, okay? However you can share it, you can send it in an email, but we need to reach as many people as possible because when people follow a low-fat diet, a diet with no saturated fat in it, they are doing harm to themselves. When a doctor recommends a low-fat diet to their patient, We've got, we've got copious amounts of research. When they say, hey, stop using bacon grease. Don't cook with that. Don't cook with butter. Cook with canola oil or vegetable oil. When a healthcare provider gives that advice to their patient, they are doing harm. We've got three randomized controlled trials that prove it. And we've got a state-of-the-art review in the American College of Cardiology's journal. This is no longer up for debate, boys and girls. If you're a healthcare provider and you walk into your office tomorrow and you recommend a low carb, I mean a low fat diet and tell your patient to avoid saturated fat, uh, you're doing harm. You're breaking your oath. Pay your 35 bucks, get a full copy of this like I did. Download the three studies that are on my Facebook and on my YouTube. Read them tonight. If you're a healthcare provider and you give a damn about your ethics and your patients, you need to read these three randomized control trials in humans, and you need to read this state-of-the-art review tonight before you see another patient tomorrow. That's how important this is. If you go into your office tomorrow and you recommend a low-fat diet, you're endangering people's lives. And that's not what your oath said, I don't think, unless it was far different from mine. All right, guys. That's it. I'm worked up. I'm sorry. This is a big deal. This is important. I wanted you guys to know this for yourself, for your own peace of mind. So next time your mother-in-law says, that Kia is going to kill you, you can just either be respectful and smile and nod and say thank you, or you can pull out your copies of these four studies and say, here you go, mom. Read on this when you've got nothing to do. Be, uh, no, please, be respectful to your mother-in-law. Don't do that. Don't take my advice. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, like I said earlier, this video will be available on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel, so you can share it. It'll be available on Instagram for 24 hours. I think that you can send it to people using the little airplane thing. I'm not sure how that works on Instagram. I'll have to ask my teenage daughter. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for the stars. Thanks a million to my Facebook supporters and my patrons on Patreon.com. You guys are our keto family, and we love you as such. And we greatly appreciate your support. And that's it. I'll see you next time. This is Dr. Barry.